assassination. Assassination. What is that? Assassination. Assassination is when someone removes someone who's who is influential or someone who has a voice or someone has power or someone has position. Uh, the spirit of assassination. Uh, come on in and come on in briefly. And I just want to talk to you right quick concerning this particular spirit. The spirit wants to silence. This spirit wants to destroy. This spirit wants to hold down. This spirit also wants to control. And now who do we know that, that has the characteristics of all of this? The Satan, the devil. The Bible says that the thief comes not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But God said that he come that we have life and life more abundantly. We'll go ahead and get started. The spirit of assassination, there was these two brothers, Cain and Abel, Jezebel. She, she's in the family. She's in the family. She's in the family. Throw her in there too. But talking about Cain and Abel, there's these two brothers. God had gave them a, 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 a charge. God had gave them a chance, a position to a competition. And he said that, offer me a sacrifice. And the one who sacrifices acceptable, I will accept. And the one who's not, I will reject. And so Cain came to God with his offering, his sacrifice. And see, Cain, he was a tiller of the ground. He worked from the ground. He, uh, the, 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 the fruit, uh, the, the vegetables and whatnot. And so, but when he came up to offer up and sacrifice to God, God rejected his offering. But then, but then when Abel came up, now Abel was a tiller of the ground, a tiller. He, he, was, he was a tiller, but he was a, he, he, he tend the sheep. He was the one that was concerning the offering, the livestock. And so when the harvest act came up, he brought the, the first ling, or he brought the first crop of what he had, what his offering. And when he brought this offering forth, God accepted his offering. But with Cain, he rejected Cain. And Cain became angry. But now God gave him a chance because God said, Cain, now, why are you angry? Now, if your offering would have been acceptable, then I would accept it. So God gave him a chance to do it again. He gave him a chance to do it again. But instead of doing again, what Cain did when he had a chance, when his brother was in the field, he slew and he destroyed his brother. The spirit of assassination. Now, the thing that you must understand about the spirit of assassination, it starts from a word. It starts from a voice. It starts from a seed. And that seed is jealousy. There are people in your life that are jealous of you because of who you are. And you didn't do nothing to them. You didn't do nothing wrong to them. But the fact that you are who you are, people are jealous of you. And see, but don't take it personal because it's that spirit that's in them that's jealous of the spirit that's in you. And that gift that God has given you, and that's love. That's God's power. And so, but the thing about it you must understand and realize is that the Bible lets us know to love them that hate, that hate you. And bless them that curse you and do good to them that despitefully use you. Because, see, because you can't do what your brother or someone do to you evil for evil. Because then there's no separation. And see, in order to become like Christ, then you must do the things that Christ calls us to do. But I'm talking about the spirit of assassination. It starts from jealousy. People are jealous. And see, jealousy is a thing of when people, you have to do nothing but because of who you are and what you've done, they begin to hate you. They begin to dislike you because you are good, because you're good at what you do, because God has chosen you, because God has blessed you, just like with Joseph. Because Joseph had a dream and he told it, his own brothers became jealous of him. There are many people are jealous of you. See, but the thing about it, stop trying to please everybody. You cannot please everybody. The Bible says that the woe to him who the, when the world speak well of you. You can't please everybody because to please the world means that you can't please God. Because the, the, the Bible says that the Bible says all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life, which is not of God. And those who, who have that, that who please the world cannot please God. Because, because God is not of the world. You don't have, God doesn't have the seed. You don't have the seed of the world. But you have the seed of the spirit. So stop trying to pre please everybody. Stop, stop it, stop it. And see, but the unfortunate thing, the unfortunate thing 
In the 13th book of Matthew, it talks about this man planting good seeds. But while he went to sleep, the enemy came in and planted tares. Now, that, that, that thing right there, that tear, that tear is a deceiver. There are many people that will come into your life that will act and perceive and make you feel as though they're cool. But really, inside, they have an agenda. And that agenda is in the heart. See, the thing about it that you must understand, the Bible says that you'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. Because something look good or sound good, that doesn't mean that is, of good, that is good and that is of God. But the Bible said, Jesus said that he would that you bear much fruit. Not that you bear much fruit, but that your fruit remain. Which means is that your fruit is not remaining, then you are not of God. Because if you are of God, it's going to last. Anything, worth, anything that God is in is going to last. That's like in a relationship. You might be in a relationship with someone and you're probably trying to wonder or uh, uh, figure out, is it going to last? Are they the one? Give it time. Just give it a little time because time is the indicator. Time will show the shine, the spotlight on what the intentions are. See, because God looks at the heart. That's how that's the separation. The separation is the heart. And that's what was the separation between Cain and Abel. See, the thing about it, the reason why Cain sacrifice wasn't accepted from God was because his heart wasn't right. He had something in his heart that was corrupt. He had something in his heart was for show, to look a certain way. We have many people in church, many people in leadership for Jensen who have a gift, but they're doing it for show. Instead of pleasing God and see what that's what God God looking for to please him because God said that without faith it's impossible to please God see flesh cannot please God can't flesh can't no flesh glory in his presence so God is looking at your heart it's not but it's not it's not how you do it but it's it's from the place that you're doing it are you doing it what are your intentions and what is your motive and say that's what God is looking for your motive. Your motive and the thing that with the spirit of Absalom or the spirit of assassination will come is through your mouth. That's why you must be careful of your mouth. Because the Bible says it's not what goes in a man that destroys him, but what comes out of him that causes the body to be defiled. And the mouth is one of the very things that God hates. Matter of fact, the voice, the, the mouth, that the feet that, that are swift to sow discord. A person who talks about a person, a person who talks about a person evil or wicked, when you even had an encounter with him, that is the spirit of assassination, verbally so. When you talk about somebody because, see, ch check this out. When you have a problem with this person, but instead of working it out with that person, instead, you will go to other people to build your clan up, to make you look a certain way and to make that other person look bad. That is the spirit of division. That is the spirit of discord. That is the spirit, that's the feet that are swift to sow discord. That's the very thing that God hates. And that is the very seed and demon that's a stronghold even in the household of faith. And that particular spirit, the spirit of assassination, the spotlight is showing on him. The spotlight is shining on that spirit. This is why we're in that harvest season. We're at the place of a new year, that the new year is about to come. And see, there's a, there's a harvest time that's taking place. And the wheat and the tares are being separated. The, the wheat are being gathered together to be used. And see, because when you name the name of Christ in this particular transition, God is preparing to use you. That's why God is causing you to become separated. And that's why God is causing you to come into a secret place. That's why God is saying to he that has an ear, let him hear what I'm saying, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. See, God wants to speak and give you instructions on your assignment. And the reason why your assignment is changing is because you're in a new place. You're in a new, new dimension. And you're in a new promise. The old promised land represents a new place, a new promise, a new plateau, a new position, and a new speaking forth where God is calling you to come forth. God is calling you to, to go forth to the highways and the byways. God is giving you instructions. Just like with uh, Psalms 91 and 1. That's why it's a military term used in a time of war. And it says that he that dwelleth in a secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And see, that particular passage of scripture is used in reference to a militant term where the number one man in charge will be summoned into the king's chamber by the king. And once that, that, that number one man in charge goes into the king's chamber, then the king will reveal to that number one man in charge his mind. And see, that's what God is doing. God is revealing to you his mind, his strategy. His plan of attack, his purpose for your life. So that's why you must stand still. That's 
why you need to stop fighting, stop bucking, and allow the process to take place. Because the process that you're going through, God has downloaded his instructions. He is downloading the instructions. But going on, but going on, but now the tear. There's a separation and God has shined the spotlight on the tares and on the tares. The Bible said once those tares are bundled up, then they will be burned up in fire and see the separation is God is exposing the deceivers. God is exposing what's in a person's heart for the Bible says that man looks at the outer appearance, but it's God that looks at the heart. See, God is looking at your heart. God is looking at your ways. God is looking at what you're doing. And God is looking at what you're doing behind the scene in secret. For the word says that what a man do in secret, God will reward him openly for. The Bible says that be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that we also weep. And so it's reaping time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's time to bless, bless the blesser. It's time to bless the righteous, but it's time to bring judgment to the wicked, to bring judgment to those that a heart is not right. I'm talking about the spirit of assassination, the spirit that plots. It's just like the Absalom spirit. When Absalom found out what his brother did, he didn't say nothing at all, but he had a plot in his heart to deceive. He had a plot in his heart to destroy and kill his brother. And see, that's what the spirit of assassination will do. The spirit of Absalom. People are plotting against you. Wickedness in every in every area. See, but don't don't be worried. And see, because God has got you covered. The spirit of Absalom, the spirit of, of assassination is being exposed. So be encouraged and be encouraged. But God is dealing with that spirit. Just I want you to do what I want you to do is to examine your heart. To examine your heart because the seed of it is the seed of it is bitterness. The seed of it is jealousy. That's why the Bible tells us to follow peace and holiness where with no man without which shall no man see the Lord. See, you need to follow peace because if you don't have follow peace, then you have confusion. Then you have bitterness. Then the Bible says that that root of bitterness will spring up on you and then it will trouble you. Many people are troubled. Many people are troubled, self-invited because they held on to so many things, because they won't talk, but because they won't communicate, because they, when people hurt them or, or offend them, instead of going to God or instead of going to them, they keep it to themselves. And then they allow it to fester. Then they have a certain position. And then bitterness gets in their heart. See, but if this is you, God wants to deal with you. God wants to deliver you from your bitterness. Rend your heart and not your garment. God don't want you to live in torment. God don't want you to live in pain. God don't want you to live in suffering. For the Bible said, for the Bible said that God, spirit, the, God has not given us the spirit of fear. For fear has torment, but power, love, and a sound mind. God wants you to have a sound mind. God wants you to have a sound mind when you wake up. God wants you to have a sound mind. Because when you have a sound mind, then God can speak to you. When your mind is not sound, then your mind is confused with things and situations. But God wants to rebuke that. God wants to give you strength. Because those voices are speaking to you. The adversary is speaking to you. The snake is speaking to you. The, the adder is speaking to you. The serpent is speaking to you with the venom. He's trying to get you to not listen to God. He's trying to get you not focus on your purpose. He's not trying to get you to focus on your gift. He's trying not trying to get you to focus on love and forgiveness. He won't want you to reach the loss, but he wants you to focus on your situation. He wants you to focus on yourself instead of God. But God, the Bible says that the axe head is laid at the root. And if this is you, and if you need God to deliver you, he can deliver and set you free. The burden removing and yoke destroyed anointing by the power of God can snap you and bring you out of your condition. For the Bible said he cast down every imagination, every thought, everything that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God and what God will do, bring it in captivity to the obedience of Christ. I tell you, obedience is better than sacrifice. Rend your heart and not your garment. It's no matter what situation you're in. You might be fighting a situation. <clears throat> you might be fighting a prideful situation. You want to revenge. You want to get back at this person, but give it to God. Let God fix it. Let God make a way. Let God heal you and let God get in your situation and he will make it good. Don't do it yourself. Don't do it because disaster, destruction lies at the door because the Bible says that he that soweth unto the flesh shall reap of the flesh corruption, but to him that soweth unto the spirit shall reap eternal life. God wants you to have eternal life today. Listen to me. Listen to me. God says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and he will give you rest. God I want to give you rest. God want to give you rest from your troubles, rest from your pain, rest from your torment, rest from your hurt. God wants to deliberate you 
Will you allow him to liberate you today? God bless you. Amen. I hope this word has really blessed you and helped you today. The spirit of Absalom. God is exposing this particular spirit. And the spirit is in the pulpit. The spirit is in the pews. The spirit in the deacon board. God is exposing it. Look for it and you will know it by the fruit. By the fruit. The fruit don't lie. It don't matter what they say with their mouth, but it's life. That life must align with their ways. That life must align with the word. If a person words, if a person lifestyle is not aligning with the word, it doesn't matter how holy they look. The devil is a liar. Let every man be a liar. But let what God say be true. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Tracy. God bless you. Keep us in your prayers. Keep us in your prayers. Mama sleeping. And I got my sidekick here, Emily, right here. She's watching uh, Mickey Mouse Club. Uh, but we're doing good. They had been a little sick, but they're getting a little better. God has blessed me. I hadn't been sick. I hadn't been sick at all. Uh, I'm still talking, still believing God, still blessing God. God is blessing our house. And I just thank God for what God is doing and how God has done in this particular season, this particular year. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is going to do on the next year, because I know on the next year is greater than this year. God already spoken to my spirit. He's going to carry me. He's going to take me up higher. And it's because I've trusted in him. If you've trusted in God, if you believe in God, use this particular hour as your thresholds. This is your Jordan. God is ready to call you on to the other side. But in order to get to the other side, you must trust God. In order to get to the other side, you must believe God and hold your mouth right and trust him against all laws. Don't look at what your, your circumstance, don't look at what you're facing, but look to Jesus just like Peter. When Peter saw Jesus, it was a boisterous storm. But when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, Jesus, Peter said, if you be you, God, allow me to come. And the word said, come. And as Peter listened to the word and he listened to the word, he was able to defy gravity and walk on water. If you keep listening to the word, you will walk on water. You will walk upon top of your circumstance. You will walk upon top of your pain. You will walk upon top of the enemy, your circumstances, everything that will try to come up against you. God will call to become your stepping stone. Everything that's tried to knock you down. Everything that tried to destroy you. Everything that tried to silence you. God will silence your gang sale because you trusted in him today. Amen. God bless you. Y'all have a good day. Please share. If this word is really blessed you, please share. And I thank you and I bless you. And uh, God is good. God is definitely good. I'm just excited. I'm excited about what God is doing in this season because God is doing new things. And see, the thing about it, I was messed up. I was messed up and undone. But he looked beyond all of my faults, all of my shortcomings, all of my weaknesses, all of my habits. And he saw my need and, 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 and he extended the scepter and he said, live. When I thought I was going to die, he said, live. When I was on that Jericho road and was bruised and broken and hurt, but he came by and swept me up. He picked me up. And put my feet on the street called straight. And now I thank him for it. And I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my kids. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for what he's put in my heart. This, this It's in my heart, this melody, love divine. It's in my heart. I can't help but uh, scream and shine. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. And so I thank God. I know I'm excited. And I appreciate you coming on and please share. If this word has really helped you, please share. I mean, there are great things that God is sending your way. There's a win that God is sending your way because of your obedience. There's a, there's, a, there's a movement. God is causing a movement to take place. It's a movement of change. If you can get into the current of what God is doing because God is causing a win. If you can get into, if you can get into the mainstream of, of the win of what God is doing. God's going to blow you into righteousness. God's going to blow you into your promise. God's going to blow you into your victory. If you can trust God against odds, all odds, and see the kind of faith that God is delivering to the church right now is the same faith that Peter had. It's the same faith that Abraham had. The, the, the same faith. And it's out God, I'm praying that that same faith be delivered again. Because in that faith, there's power. In that faith, there's character. In that faith, there's something that's steadfast. There's something that's unmovable. There's something that's always abounding in the work of God. No matter what wind might be blowing and no matter how high the waves might be, your soul will be anchored in God because God is your source. God is your God is your light. God is your highlight. God is your shining tower. God is your strong tower. If you trust God, 
to the end, God will bring you out of whatever it is. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter how bad your heart has been broken. It doesn't matter how you're hurting. It doesn't matter how you've been beat and bruised. He was bruised for our transgress. He was wounded. And by his stripes, we're healed. God is bringing his healing. And his healing is coming through your patience. His healing is coming through your faith in him. Trust him because in that faith that you trust in him, in that faith that you believe him, there is coming a release. There is coming coming an aroma. There is coming a sap. There is coming ointment. There is coming an herb that will heal the nation. And in that healing that God heals you, God wants you to open up your mouth and become a healing. God wants you to speak out as a river. God wants you to speak out as a flood. And as this flood come out your mouth, it's going to go from the highway to the byway. It's going to go into the hills and hedges. It's going to go to the hospitals. It's going to go into the schools. It's going to go into the streets. It's going to go into the backyard. It's going to go into the bedroom. It's going to go everywhere. And God's purpose and God desire for us to become a praise. And because when we become a praise, we know that God abides where praise is at. God shows his power where praise is at. God reveals his glory where praise is at. Healing will take place. Deliverance will take place. Notable miracles will break forth. Joy where people will run to the, through the troops and leap over the walls because the people of God has aligned themselves in obedience. Amen. God bless you. I'm done. I'm excited. Y'all take care. Please share. <laughs> Amen. God bless you.